everything intensifies. But the clock keeps going. All teachers are performing satisfactorily. All the last minute countdown checks are proceeding okay. This is it. This is for real. That thing's going to light off on here. You're going to head on out to the moon. Ignition sequence start. America that was going to the moon, but de facto life, it, it was 20th century humanity that was going to the moon. The, the entire world was on board that spacecraft with us. this big thing that's going on, and yet you don't realize how big a thing it is, quite frankly. You don't fully comprehend it all. out the window. Your whole window is filled up with the earth. How's that for the front porch? Oh boy, that's beautiful. Uh, Dan, it's looking real stable to us. We show you clothes and climbing. Charlie, we can't be more than about five, ten feet away. Snap, snap, and we're there. Got two grains. Roger. You capture that lunar module. 
and we're on our way. You now regain consciousness as to where you are and where you're going. When you got out there and looked back, as small as it is compared to the Earth, when you're the only two guys out there, it can be pretty lonely at times. Once we got in, we took our suits off, and we had to dry them out. We had to eat, we had to rest, I remember specifically pulling up to shade before we tried to get some rest and looking out at the earth. Maybe I just had to make sure it was still there. That whole period of time, that's the time I call sitting on God's front porch. I was out there somewhere with the opportunity to see something and be somewhere and do something that only 12 human beings in the history of mankind have been able to do or be or see. Tracy, did he promise to bring you anything back? Well, I asked him to bring a rock back from the moon, but he said if he could, he'd bring me one back, and he said if he could, he'd bring me a moonbeam. A, a what? A moonbeam. A moonbeam? <laughs> He's either pulling your leg or you're pulling mine. That's what he said. <laughs> so that they could operate the television camera and watch our liftoff. And I don't know what possessed me to do it. I, I just scratched Tracy's initials in the lunar surface. I put TDC. And someday, sometime, I can only believe, not just hope, but believe that someone will go back. And that's what they'll find. I guess you appreciate things the older you get, always. You understand them better, you appreciate them more, and you know, the older I, I get, probably the more meaningful it gets to me. I'm gonna roll it downhill so we can work on it. Well, I'll document it first. Walking up the ladder was probably one of the most memorable moments for me because I looked down at my footprints and I knew I wasn't coming this way again. Why were we here? What did it mean? I looked over my shoulder, and there's the Earth. There's reality. There's home. I, I wanted to, I wanted to press the freeze button. I wanted to stop time. I really wanted to reach out, put it in my hand, stick it in my space and bring it home and show it to everybody. This is what it feels like. This is what it looks like. This is Apollo Control at 187 hours, 31 minutes. Now approaching 30 minutes until time for lunar liftoff. The countdown toward liftoff going very smoothly. Three, two, one, 
Just standing here, a little nostalgic, sort of gives me, uh, gives me a chance to, to wonder whether this all happened in my life, whether it was a reality or whether it was a dream. Is that, is that dummy in there with my name on really me? And I also stand here and I'm, I'm wondering what people are gonna think not in another 40 years, but maybe another 100 years. Who knows? Maybe another 1,000 years. I often tell young kids, and particularly my grandkids, don't ever count yourself out. You'll never know how good you are unless you try. Dream the impossible and go out and make it happen. I walked on the moon. What can't you do?